When you're listening to music, what does that have to do to make you feel alive? Oh, um, I think as long as I, as long as I feel some sort of emotion from it, like um, for if it's a singer, and as long as I can feel that the singer is putting emotion into what they're singing, then I'll feel something from it, even if it's like. I don't know, a genre that I don't usually like or something like that, or maybe even a band that I don't usually like or something like that. If I suddenly notice, like, whoa, they're really putting everything into that, then it suddenly catches it for me. Uh, it def it's, that's definitely it, as long as someone's putting their full emotion into it. Um, happy or sad emotions. <laughs> when, you're, so when you're in the studio, how do you go about doing that for yourself? And like kind of put, and making sure you're putting everything into it and capturing the full kind of spectrum of the emotion you're wanting to convey? Um, I try and just calm down as much and focus on what I'm saying, what I'm singing. Because um, sometimes you can, you do catch yourself like going through the motions um, and checking out of it when you're singing. And you do have to sort of catch yourself and make yourself get back into it. Um, so yeah, as long as I'm not getting lazy, that's fine. <laughs> it's been... Is it almost a year and a half now since midsummer? Year, yes. Year and five months or something? When you listen midwinter it'll be a year and a half. <laughs> when you listen to the the new single, like from a listener's point of view, it feels like quite a kind of sonic change and quite a big evolution. Mm -hmm. Has it been quite a gradual thing for you or the songs that we haven't seen in between that have kind of marked that evolution or Yeah, it's definitely been for me it's been a gradual change of moving from like a live sound to a more heavily produced sound um, and I feel like yeah I feel like maybe that's something that other people haven't seen and then I've just been slowly trying to do it over the past few years I think um, but then since lockdown happened I was just like right here we go let's do a dramatic change um, but I'm really happy um, I feel like I'm getting to show a different side of my music um, that people won't have seen before. Um, so yeah, it feels good to be able to do that. When did you first kind of have the idea and get a grasp before you wanted to take it and kind of push it in that slightly more produced direction? Um, I'm not sure. It's always, I think the past few years, it's been a thought in my mind when I'm writing songs or thinking of how to do songs, how to play them. I've have been sort of toying with the idea of like having it a more live production you know like live drums all that sort of thing real instruments and then for some songs thinking oh, i just want all electronic instruments and synths so i have been kind of going back and forth on that and with this one i just thought may as well go in go all in and try it out and really really happy with the result and um, and it was i mean it's stuart and rowan of van ives who produced it and they did like an incredible job. It's so cool. Um, so it was good, good fun to work with them as well. What was the first conversation? What was the first conversation you shared with them about working on the song? Uh, probably the level of uh, of um, of how electronic -y we were going to go because <laughs> uh, I think at first. Um, they thought I was going to want it more like Midsummer and other things and I was like no we're going to go all the other way on this one <laughs> um, and then they just took it to another level so that was that was probably one of the first things we were thinking about yeah what sort of shape was the song when you took it in with them uh, it was just the basic sort of demo that I had done when I did it uh, like almost two years ago I think the first demo it was very stripped back and just like the basic the two synths uh, two synth lines doing those interconnected things and like a wee funky beat and then when I started doing it live with the band it changed it, it like it became something else and it and it kind of kept changing over the past two years and then I just kind of came back to the original demo and thought I want to kind of keep it as kind of sparse um, sound and then but really make it quite dramatic like that 
Um, so I think that's how it's kind of come full circle in that respect. <laughs> that's something I know you're kind of speaking about the juxtaposition there between it being sparse. Mm-hmm. Um, there's something with the lyricism as well of it. You kind of have this evocative wordplay that's quite impressionistic and quite kind of. Oh yes, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> But then it's also juxtaposed in the chorus, which is pretty direct, mm-hmm. and you know, saying what it is. Yeah. How? At what point are you kind of gain a confidence to ride that line? Is it something you're kind of doing perfectly on this single, just going straight in the middle and getting the perfect balance? Some Vanaz do as well. Oh yes. Yeah, the parallel there. Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess this song is quite um, a direct song, and um, it's. I guess when I wrote it, I did want it to come across as quite cutting and kind of, I don't know, what's the word? I can't think of the word. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it does have that sort of, I want it to have that sort of effect on people, like to make them think like, even like the first line like of the chorus, there's, there's something in your teeth. Um, it kind of pulls you in. So I wanted to kind of pull people into the song, and um, I guess that's how did I answer did that answer the question? <laughs> I got is that what you were keeping in mind with the production as well? Like in terms of that idea of pulling you in, was that what was driving that? In terms of where you wanted that to go, the more yeah. iconic style. Um, I wanted, I definitely wanted the production to be like super dynamic, so that it was like kind of constantly shifting, and it really let you focus on what was happening because um, at some, some points in the song it's just it's so basic it's just like the the vocal and, and like a synth and the the off kilter beat um because you, you could add like lots of stuff to it but i wanted to keep it kind of like really spare sparse and bare um so that you are it draws all your focus onto it and um, but then there's one point in the song uh, where it all just goes like whoosh and like all the mad stuff all the mad synths come out and that's like a nice uh, sudden like, whoa. So is that sort of way I want it to sort of draw you in and make you go like, whoa, and throw you off. Um, but that's just having fun with with writing it and doing the production and stuff like that. So yeah, it's making a fun musical experience. <laughs> what sort of a role do like external factors play in the in what song you're going to release? Because you think about this track, it's such a kind of bright you know, offering being released in the midst of quite a dark period in the time. Yeah, um, I don't know, I hope it's, um, I hope it serves as kind of an uplifting song, because um, that's what it is for me, I, like, I wrote it as a sort of way of, um, it is about sort of being uplifted and facing, sort of facing your doubts and all this other stuff, um, and finding your way. So, um, I guess, I hope that comes across with other people and it helps them out during this time. Um, but yeah, and it feels like it's, 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 it's one of those songs I don't know, I wouldn't call it a happy song or a sad song. It's just sort of a song. <laughs> it's just it's it's yeah because you I mean with Midsummer you'd say oh that's a happy song um, Midsummer's got a darkness to it as well it though. does that's the funny thing <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, you can tell it's cheery whereas this one it's sort of um, it's a bit not unsettling that's the wrong word but like you don't know kind of how to place it um, but then the words are quite uplifting I think they're kind of forcing you to look at yourself, that sort of thing. It's quite biting. Yeah. It's quite, so you can get that as well in the vocal performance, it's very charged. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so did you, were you in a room of an eyes for this or were you going over Zoom back and forth? No, it was over, all over Zoom, <laughs> um, which was an interesting experience, but it was, it, I mean, it was, it was good fun because, I mean, we all get along with pals and we've already worked on stuff before. Um, so like, it's not like, um, first time meeting someone to work on something with the added awkwardness of being on Zoom. Um, so it meant it was fine. Um, it's just funny, <laughs> the three of us all working on it separately. Um, but it was, it was, it worked out. 
really well. It worked out better than I thought because I was worried it would be so difficult and take so much longer to like, you know, to think just to change the mini school things. And it does take longer to fix things rather than just you're in the room say like, oh, change that. It's like explaining it and you're like, oh no, it's not that bit, it's that bit and oh, it gets lost in translation. But um, but yeah, it worked out fine in the end. Just a new experience. <laughs> but everyone's got new experiences on lockdown. <laughs> Did you learn anything from it? Like in um, terms of the way you communicate in the studio and stuff? I, maybe just being... Um, taking more time to... to um, sit with ideas. I, I think I'm always cautious instantly with like new... Um, when I like make a change to something, I instantly don't like it, and I have to sit with it for a while until I realise if I really don't like it or if I actually do like it. Um, I think I just instantly um, doubt a new change. <laughs> so I think it's it's I guess it's taught me to like sit with things for a bit longer and figure out if it's if it's just me <laughs> instantly being like oh I don't know if I like this or um, if I actually don't like it. So yeah, I suppose that's something I've learned. How long does it usually take for that change to kind of occur? Mm -hmm. Don't know. Can go for like an hour to like a week. <laughs> it just depends. Um, but I'm always that kind of person. Like I buy new shoes, I hate them instantly, and then I like them a few days days later. Um, does so it ever yeah. go back and forth with songs? Do you ever not like it, and then you like it again, and then you don't like it? Does it go? Yeah, I do that with a lot of ones that I write, and then abandon for a while and then can't be bored coming back to and then when I finally force myself to come back to them I'm like oh no this is good um, so I do that all the time or I get sick of songs <laughs> because I've like played them for not too long um, and then it's not until I don't play them for a while that I miss it so yeah I definitely do that um, can Vin well you, you know you said about working with the knives if they're bringing in another perspective, can that kind of change the way you feel about songs? Like, they maybe point something out in it if you were uncertain about it? Yeah, and and just um, putting out wee bits that maybe I was happy with, um, noticing that they, they were also happy with it or that they really liked something as well. Even if we hadn't talked about it, they would just pick up on something and I'd be like, oh, that's encouraging. Um, but I always think that like with working with other people, it's... It always brings out, um, brings out the best in you. Some, well, not all the time, but um, I think it can have the capacity to bring out the best in you, because you recognise the things um, I don't know that matter that you don't think matter. Uh, yeah, if what that was, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. What was an example of that with this song? Like noticing something you didn't think mattered that really did. Um, I think just one I mean, one thing is like um, when we were playing about with ideas, uh, they had put down just like we we things you might not notice on first listen, and then the second listen you notice a bit more, and third listen. So it's we things you pick out far away on this ear, or just like sitting in the back um, that I loved and that were really I thought were really clever, and then. Um, when we brought it up, they were like, "Oh yeah, we're really happy about this as well," and it just it makes you makes you realise just the wee tiny things can really matter and make the difference. Um, so that was a nice thing. I really liked doing that, and they're they're geniuses as well. So they Chris pick out nice all the energy. <laughs> yeah, it does exactly, and gets you like all enthused for it as well. How did your relationship change with them over the course of making the song? How did it impact the most? I don't think it impacted it. I hope it didn't impact it. <laughs> um, nah, I think it was just good fun to work with them because I like, I like hadn't seen them obviously for a long time. Um, so it was just good to hang out um, and work on it. Um, so yeah, it was just good fun, really. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just doing this because I'm so cold. <laughs>